All right, so divisibility is a number, is divisible by another number if it can be divided evenly. All right, so it's divisible by another number if it can be divided evenly. And that means that there's no remainder or decimal. So remember, if I'm highlighting, you're highlighting. If I'm writing, you're writing. All right, so here are the rules for the numbers and um, how they become divisible. So two um, is divisible by two if the last digit is what, essentially? It's one word. If the last digit is one of these types of numbers, it is divisible by two. Question? Even. Even. Okay. Um, it's divisible by three if the sum of the digit is divisible by three. So that means three, six, nine, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, it's divisible by four if the last two digits form a number divisible by four. So what this means is if it makes a number that is divisible by four. So think about four. So what's four divisible by? Um, Samantha? Four is not divisible by two. Uh, Gabe? Eight. Okay, what's another one? Sixteen. What's another one? Forty-four. Forty-four. What's another one? Um, Silas? Forty-eight. So the last two numbers form a number that four can go into evenly. All right, obviously everybody should know five. It's either a five or a zero. <clears throat> six um, is divisible by six if both, or it's divisible by six if it's divisible by two or three. Okay, um, seven, eight are not on here, nine. Um, it's divisible if the digits are divisible by 9. And then um, 10 if the last digit is a 0. Okay, so just a little cheat sheet. We're not going to go super in-depth with this just because um, this is something that you learned and you should have already learned, so it's just a review. <clears throat> All right, so it says state whether or not 4,015 is divisible by each of the following numbers. Explain why or why not. So two, is it divisible by two? Raise your hand. Um, Zachary? No. Why? Because two is cannot go into five and that's the last digit. So it's not even, okay? So no, two does not work. It's not an even number. All right. So what about this yes, man? So um, you have a new kid in your math class. Yep. Eighth grade. So I don't exactly know how your class works. Um, lunchtime. So after lunchtime, you just come down here. So I'll come and pick you up about twelve twenty-five. Um, I'll come into the lunchroom and just call like Miss Kitty's kids, and that's when you come. You'll see. A bunch of them get up and come, um, and then we'll go from there until, excuse me, until like 1.50. Okay, all right, sounds good. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, all right, what about three? Three divisible by this number. No, wait, no, because the last digit is divisible. Okay, so if you don't know, recommendation number one, don't call out. Okay. Two. Look at it. It says, if it's divisible by 3. Well, is 5 divisible by 3? Mm -hmm. No. So then, therefore, it is no. It's not divisible by 3. Okay? Now, before you call out or say anything, mm -hmm. think about the next one, 4. And then think about what makes a number divisible by 4. So will it work? Raise your hand. Question. Um, no. Why? Because four can't go into 
right? So it can't go in evenly. What about five? Is this number divisible by five? BK? Yeah. Why? Because five and five are the same, so it can go in here evenly. Because it ends in five. Okay? And then obviously six, nine, and ten, if the only one is divisible by is five, what do we know about six, nine, and ten? Is it divisible? No. All right, so for six, it's no because it, do, it's, it doesn't go into two or three. Nine, no, it's not divisible by nine. And ten, no, the last digit isn't zero. Stand up when you have this written down. You should be standing if you're finished. All right, slide over to the factors, prime, and composite. So it says um, a factor is a number that can be multiplied by a certain number, okay? This is also known as two numbers multiplied together. And then finding the factors is just a review. So how do we find the factors? How do you find GCF? That's what we're talking about right now. How do we find GCF? What do we use? Silas? Yes. So for 20, technically there's no number over here, but we'll just do by a partial T. What are, we always start with 1. So 1 times 20. What's another one? Um, Gabe, two times, two times ten. What's another one, Kira? Four times five. Four times five. Anything else? Mm -hmm. And how do we know that we're done, Gabe? Because we'll start repeating, right? And that means we'll say five times four, and we don't need to write that again. 
All right, so your factor is for 100. I want you guys to do that on your own. Save that when you have those factors. All right, one times 100. What's the next one? Try. Two, times Two times 50. What's the next one? Um, Samantha. Why does three not work? Why does three not work here? Uh, Silas. So it doesn't go in evenly? Okay, just make sure. All right, what's the next one? Um, Everly. Five times 20. Okay, what about six? Why not? Raise your hand. Why does six not work? Someone other than Silas and Samantha. Why does six not work here? Alex. Because there's two or three. Okay, so it doesn't go in evenly. Two, 100. All right, what about seven? Does seven work? No. Raise your hand, tell me why does it not work? Kira. It's the same reason for all the ones that don't work. You're literally telling me the exact same reason. Gabe. Doesn't go in evenly. What about eight? Doesn't go in evenly. What about nine? What about ten? So ten times ten. All right, prime numbers. Again, we briefly talked about this, but I know you guys have talked about this in previous grades. So it has exactly two factors, one and itself. So some examples are two, three, five, seven, 11, 13. Does 15 work? No. no. Raise your hand, tell me why. Why does 15 not work? Because so far, other than two, it's been all odd numbers. So why does 15 not work, Kira? Because um, three and five go into 15. So it's, it's three and five and one and 15, okay? Um, we have 17, we have 19, 23, 29, so on and so on and so on. Okay, we're not gonna list all the prime numbers. We'd be here forever. So we don't. Yeah. Okay, um, a composite number is a number with more than two factors. All right, and we're gonna use 15 as the example. So it's one times 15 and three times five. Okay, excuse me, so that's your example. So here, why does two not work? Why does two not work? What's special about two? Silas? It's only got two factors, one in itself. It's the only even number that is not a composite number. All right, so you have four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, so on and so on and so on. And then up here, our example, we'll use three, which is one times three. Um, I use 15 as the example. Oh. So, I mean, uh, you can throw 15 in there. I just use it as the example. Would the next one be 22 or would it be 21 if we were doing prime or in closet numbers? Sorry. 22. 
21 because it's 1 and 21 and 3 and 7. All right, slide down to prime factorization. So we are going to do a couple problems. We're not going to do all of these. All right, so prime factorization is the process of breaking a number down into a product of only prime numbers. All right, and the prime numbers, again, we're not going to list them because they're. I'm just going to draw an arrow to where we wrote some prime numbers earlier. So from there to there. Okay, we're not going to repeat those numbers again. All right, so looking at 36, give me two numbers that we can multiply together to get 36. Um, Angel? No. Something other than one. Oh. Angel? Two times six. Okay. So you have six times six. Are either one of those a prime number? No. no. So we can keep breaking them down. So then here, I'm going to do two times three. Well, what do I know about two? It's a, it's a prime number. So I'm going to circle it. I'm done with it. What do I know about three? It's a prime number. It's a prime number. I'm going to circle it. I'm done with it. So then it's probably going to be the same thing over here. And this becomes 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, or 2 squared times 3 squared. Questions about that one? Okay. I want you guys to do... 48. Okay, so you're picking the two numbers that you're multiplying together. Stand up when you're done. They just have to be two factors that you multiply together to get 48. And then you're breaking it down until you only have prime numbers left. All right, what are two numbers that we multiply to get 48? Alex? All right, are either one of those a prime number? Nope, so I'm going to break this down. This becomes 2 times 3. I know both of those are prime numbers. And this becomes 2 times 4. I know 2 is a prime number, but what do I know about 4? It's a composite, so I can keep breaking it down. So 2 times 2. Now those are all prime numbers. So it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, or 2 to the 4th times 3. Either way. Now, some of you guys might have done 4 times 12. You should still end up with the same answer, right? Some of you guys might have done 2 times 24. Still up, end up with the same answer. Okay? So regardless of how you do it, you should still end up with 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, or 2 to the 4th power times 3. Okay? All right, let's do 21, just to have a number that's not even up here. All right, so what, I don't want to do 1. So what are the only two options I have left? 3 times 7. And we know 3 is a prime number. Is 7 a prime number? Is there anything we can multiply 7 by other than 1 in itself? Okay. So then this is my prime factor. All right, questions about that? All right, slide over to the uh, greatest common factor. 
Am I going too fast? Are we doing okay? okay? All right, so greatest common factor is the largest factor two or more numbers share. Now, they talk about doing it using prime factorization. I don't do it that way. If you want to do it that way, you are more than welcome to. I don't. Um, so I want you to find the GCF of uh, 56 and 120. So what are the factors for 56? So 1 times 56, what's another one? 2 times what? Twenty-eight. Does four or sorry, does three go into this number? How do you figure out if a number works? What do you what can you do? Right, but if you can't sit here and do that in your head, what operation can you do to figure out if it's gonna go in evenly? Yes. So if you can't figure out, so I'm gonna do fifty-six divided by three goes in one time. 26, so no, it's not going to work. What about 4? Does 56 go into 4? Four? 14. Four, four times 14. So 4 times 14. What about 5? Does 5 work? No. What about 6? No. What about 7? No. Yes. Yeah. Okay, raise your hand. Okay. Angel? Eight. And then what about nine? No. And then obviously we're done. All right. 120. So you have one times 120. Two times 60. Three times 40. Four times 30. Five times It's got to work because it ends in a zero, right? Okay, so how many times does 5 go into 120? Silas? 24. 6 times... What is it? 20. 6 times 20. What about 7? Raise your hand before you... Or think about this before you call out. What about 7? <coughs> Seven work? Why not? You're right. Why doesn't it work? Does it go in evenly? Okay. What about eight? Does the eight work? Does eight work? Ansley? Fifteen times. What about nine? Nope. What about 10? 10 times what? 12. All right. How do you figure out? Well, let's use our highlighter now. Actually, no, let's use our, our we're going to circle. So we have two. We have four. We don't have seven in the 120. We do have eight. Do we have 14? Not yet. Do we have 14? No. Do we have 15? 20? 28? In both. Remember, guys, we're looking for both. Okay? So it looks like the biggest number that we have in both is what? 8. So go ahead and highlight the 8, and that tells you this is your GCF. All right, you guys are finding the GCF of 24 and 30. Go stand up when you're done.
All right, let's go ahead and give me the factors for 24. Factors for 24. Um, Everly. Um, 2 times 12. Keep going. 2 times, 3 times 8. Keep going. 4 times 6. All right. Why does 5 not work? Raise your hand and tell me. Doesn't go in evenly. And then 6, we start repeating, correct? All right, so raise your hand and give me the factors for 30. Ansley. 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 5 times 6. Why doesn't 4 work, Ansley? It doesn't go anywhere. Okay, and then why do we stop at 5 times 6? It's going to start repeating. All right, so then we're going to circle all the ones that are the same. Did I miss one? Two, three, and six. Is that what you guys came up with? Yeah. Okay, and then your GCF should be six. All right, slide over to, or flip over on the back. Now we're going to talk about least common multiples. All right, least common multiple um, is a number created when multiplying a certain number. Or sorry, a multiple is when is a number created when multiplying a certain number. When we're looking for multiples of four, you're essentially doing what? Sit up, Alex. What are you doing when you're finding multiples of any number? Okay. Never mind. Um, don't raise your hand the rest of the day. Like, Lord have mercy, every time I've called on you, you just. You have yet to answer one of my questions. It's always like, uh, no, never mind. Think before you raise your hand. Kira. So, repeated addition? That is all. Finding multiples that are just repeating the same number, adding it over and over and over and over and over again. All right, so you have four, eight. What comes next? Raise your hand. <coughs> Ansley. Okay, what comes after 12? Silas. 16. What comes after 16? Angel T. 20. Comes after 20. BK. 24. What comes after 24? Samantha? 28. All right. Multiples of 6. You have 6, 12. What comes next? 18. Don't call it out. Samantha? 18. 18. What comes after 18? Silas B? 24. What comes after 24? Gracie? 30. What comes after 30? BK? 36. And what comes after 36? Alex? 42. 42. All right, so again, it's just repeated addition. That is all multiples are. All right, now when you find the least common multiple or LCM, you're finding the smallest multiple two or more numbers share. And we're going to do our sideways T right here. I always put the smaller number on top because you usually have to go further out. Now, I'm going to do the first five for eight. So you should have 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. 10 should be really easy for us. So raise your hand and tell me the first, and either till we see a comma multiple or the first five, whichever comes first. Kira? 10, 20, 30, 40. And why are you stopping at 40? Five. Okay, because it is our LCM. It's our least common multiple between both of those numbers.
All right, I want you guys to do, find the LCM for seven and four. Stand up when you're done. All right, someone list the first four, sorry, first five multiples of uh, four for me. Zachary. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Okay. Now someone list the first four multiples of, or five multiples of seven. BK. Seven, 14, Okay, do we have a common multiple yet? No. So I'm gonna go back up to four. I'm going to keep going and see if I come up with something that's down here. Did I? Yep. Yep. So my LCM for this one is 28. All right, slide over to the problem solving with LCM and GCF. These hints are going to be very helpful today when you go into your practice problems that you're about to get. So it says, um, if it is a greatest common factor problem, the question will require your answer to be smaller than the numbers you are starting with. So, you, bless you. Your answer is going to be smaller. So, like, for example, um, when you're finding GCF, you're given 16 and 18, and you have to find the GCF between those two. The GCF is what, two? I just pulled these. No, 16 and 18. Yeah, two. So, 16, 18, and 2, which is smaller? Is it 2? you're finding 16 and 18 and your GCF is 2. So 2 is smaller than your two numbers, right? So with LCM, your numbers are going to be larger. So over here, if you look at this, we are finding the LCM of 4 and 7. Our LCM was what? 28. All right, that's also the first thing for finding an LCM problem. So again, it's a trick, just something to think about. When you're finding GCF problems, um, it's going to ask you to split something into sections, groups, or rows. And then it's going to ask you for the greatest number, or largest number, or maximum. Okay? Those keywords that mean really big, right? Um, now, slide down real quick to, sorry, I guess you don't really need to. Down here, it's going to ask you to extend a pattern or reoccurring event. This means it's going to ask you a question like, Sincere and Miss Kinney have, Sincere plays basketball, Miss Kinney plays soccer. And they have practice on every third Thursday and every third Tuesday. When are they both going to have practice at the same time? Like, that's a multiple, common multiple question. 
Okay, so you have to figure out, okay, when are practices going to, over, that was just an example, I don't know if it would ever actually work, but um, it's going to ask to you to continue trying to find until something happens on the same day. Um, then it's going to say, find the next time something will happen. Smallest possible amount for the situation. So smallest, minimum, least, all of those words. Okay, you and your table mates, partners, whatever you want to call them, you're going to do the practice for GCF and you're going to do the practice for LCM together right now. These are word problems, so what should you probably do within your word problems? Annotate, Annotate them. I'm going to give you about five minutes. If you finish before then, stand up. If not, then we'll go over them when we're done. Focus on what you're supposed to actually be working on.
Go ahead. Go over these. So, guys, stop talking. It says Robert has 20 tomato plants and 20, sorry, 30 tomato plants and 24 cucumber plants. He wants to plant them in rows that only have one type of plant in each row, with the same number of plants in each row. How many plants should he put in each row and how many rows of each type? A plant will he have? So you have 30 and 24. All down here it says he wants to put them in rows and only have one type of plant. And then he wants to have the same number of rows. Um, and your question is to make sure that you answer this. Are you finding GCF or LCM for the first one? Yeah. GCF. Falls under the GCF information. Um, I'm going to turn my paper sideways because I don't have enough room. Um, maybe I'm not. So you have 30. Someone raise your hand and tell me all the factors for 30. Um, Gracie. Okay. 30 times 1, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 5 times 6. Okay. And then for 24. What do we have for 24? Silas. Okay, so our GCF is going to be what? Six. All right, so how though do we explain this? Because it's not just asking us for the GCF. So what is that six representing? And this is where GCF and LCM problems are a little bit more difficult than just finding GCF or LCM. So that's telling us we're gonna have six rows. And then what is that telling us? What about the five and what about the four? Anybody know? Yes. Yep. So you're going to have five, what, tomatoes yeah. in a row, and then you're going to have four cucumbers. Okay, so you have six rows all together. You have five tomatoes in one and four cucumbers in the other. You need to get that written down so that you know how to answer the questions you're going to be doing today. Because it's not just asking you, what is the GCF? That's not what this question asks at all, is it? The next one says, Robert works in the community garden every two days, and Sally works in the community garden every five days. If they both work in the garden today, how many days will it be before they see each other at the garden again? If today is July 3rd, what will be the date of the next um, of their next meeting? All right, so Robert works in the garden every two days. Sally works in the garden every five days. So that's essentially what you're doing. Um, it says they both work in the garden today. How many days will it be before they see each other again? And it's asking you, what is the date? So when you do this, it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And this is 5, 10. So your LCM is what? Ten. Right, but what does that stand for in our question? Because it didn't say, what is the LCM? So what is the LCM? What does 10 stand for? Ansley. Um, the Okay, so it'll be 10 days before they see each other again. So again, make sure you're writing this down. And then um, how do we figure out what the date is going to be? This part should be fairly easy. <clears throat> Gracie? Can you ask Okay. So again, using the information and actually answering with context. Thumbs up when you have all of this written down.
All right, you are going to glue this paper into your notebook. I don't care if you put it this way or you put it this way. It does not truly matter to me. It just needs to get glued in. Then you need to turn the page or slide over to the next blank right side. Sorry, not turn the page. All right, you need to title the top of the next blank left page, GCF LCM, homework 10 slash 24, and then pick 10. Yes? Can you uh, Yeah, sorry, right page. Um, then grab your highlighter. Go right there. So it says, read each problem and write GCF or LCM. So you see this little box right here? That is where you're writing GCF or LCM, okay? Um, in the box to show that you understand the strategy. On a separate sheet of paper. It even tells you right in the directions. On a separate sheet of paper, show your working out, aka show your work. Um, and then record your answers on this sheet. So you can put your answers on this sheet. You can put if this is a GCF or LCM question on this sheet. Where are you doing your work? <laughs> on this sheet right here that you just titled. Okay. You are picking 10 of these problems. You're not doing all 16. If you want to, fantastic. You're not getting anything extra. You're simply picking 10. Um, whatever you do not finish in class today will be your homework tonight. This is due tomorrow. If you want to work with a partner, I do not have a problem with that, but you need to use your time very wisely. Okay? If you don't want to work with a partner, that is fine as well. That is your choice. Um, are there any questions before you get started? Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and get started.